Coding. Made easy. So what's up everybody? This is Peter aka Coding Made Easy coming to you guys with your uh, I don't even know which tutorial number we're on. I think 11th uh, C-Trap tutorial. And in this tutorial we are going to be learning about a concept called arrays. Now let's say um, I was your boss and I said that I right now we only support two numbers, right? So we store in two different variables. But say I said I want us to support 20 numbers based on the knowledge we know now how could we do it and I want you to pause and think about it for a second but if you don't you can continue watching um, but how would we do it well there's a couple ways I can think about the top of my head right a couple based on the knowledge we know right now so we can make a bunch of variables we can make up the 20 different variables or we could do something simple and uh, based on the number of numbers they want to input we could say int our total set to zero you can loop through the how many times you want to loop so say you want to loop 10 times and then based on the number they enter let's just say they enter number one every single time based on the number they enter then we add that to the total plus equals remember that adds it's the same as equal, saying total equals total plus a number so we add that to the num and then we can display that so that's one way we can go about it but there's a problem because we have the total stored but let's say we want to store the values that made up the total so you want to reuse that value how would we do it well we have no choice but to create a bunch of individual variables so this works for for one one way if you just want to add a bunch of values and just get the total that's fine but if you want to store the values that made up the total that becomes a problem and so based on our knowledge we can only do it by creating variables so let's say we made 20 so or let's just say our boss wants us to make five so then we say number four and then we say number five okay and that's fine. You're like, okay, you made it work, and you had um, you had a console out for every single one, and then you stored all the five, and you added them all together. Your boss is like, we don't want to support five, now we want to support fifty. You see the problem? You have to add new variables every single time. But with arrays, we can store the same amount of variables under one name, and that's how we do so. So we put the data type. We put two square braces, or square brackets. Sorry. And then put the variable name. Uh, sorry about that sound. I don't know if you heard that. And don't worry, you can put as much space as you want between it. But I like to put it right beside it. And so we say in, and this thing means represents that we have an array. So what we're gonna do after is we're gonna put the new new keyword. We'll be saying new a lot uh, later on. But we're gonna say new int and then we're going to put the square brackets and inside the square brackets we put the size of the array uh, so the max capacity and so our boss says that they want 20 we're going to put 20 in there and voila just by doing that we just made 20 variables we just made 20 variables now you're thinking okay well we only have one variable name how did we make 20 well it's simple we we access it by using the angle brackets the same way like this so if you want to access the first element we say number zero you want to access the second and we can set it to like any value you want if you want to access the second you can say number one and as you notice the first element is not number zero just like i stated before with the string format characters right if not everything in c-sharp majority of things that would start with a value zero um but yeah so essentially when we make an array of 20 we have values from zero to 19 so that equals 20 so it starts from zero and then goes all the way to the last value so then with this we've just made 20 different variables under one name and this is beneficial because look at this so right now you're saying okay we put them all under one name but we still have to set them individually so we still got to say number zero equals whatever we still got to ask them to enter the number two and then set it to blah 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 and so on and so forth 
it's still the same thing as creating separate variables. But it's not, because look at the cool things we can do with arrays and for loops. Uh, so, let's get rid of uh, What we're going to do is we're going to say console write lock write. We're going to say enter enter the amount of numbers you would like to enter and so we're just gonna say uh, amount of numbers or amount of num nums whatever and we're gonna say convert to int32 and we're gonna say console dot reline and put that there and so we get the amount of numbers that the user would want to enter right so now our program is a, a bit even better because now we're not just restricted to 20 items or 100 items they want to enter a thousand they can say they want to enter a thousand right but how do we set it so that no matter what number they input that we can hold it because right now our array only holds 20 but say we want it to hold a hundred or hold a thousand well, what you could do is you can make this array super big an arbitrarily large number but the problem with that is that it takes a space in memory a necessary space that you probably won't use so using the power of arrays what we're going to do is after they enter the num number we could even do something like this we can say number is equal to new int and inside there we can put amount of nums right so no matter how much they enter our array will be that exact size and if you want to make this code even shorter right we can get rid of amount of nums right here and say number is equal to new int put the brackets here and then whatever they enter will be the value like so but i wouldn't really advise this because if they enter a value that's not a number there's no way to really evaluate it and you would crash so this way is the safer way because you can always do error checking on this value to make sure it's a correct value or if you want to limit the value if you want only a particular range you can always limit the range of it and blah 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 so this way is a safer way to go about it so now we've set our array to the size of the number amount of numbers we actually want to enter so now we're going to use our old friends the for loop sorry i had to pause to do something quickly but yeah we're going to be using our old friends the for loop so now what we're going to do is we're going to use our for loop and we're going to say i is equal to zero i want to say i while i is less than amount of nums then we're going to increase i by one so this is going to loop through basically the amount of numbers they actually want to input. So if they want to input 10, it's just going to loop 10 times. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say console.write and we're going to say enter uh, number and then we'll put that and in here we'll put i plus 1. So what is it saying? It's saying it's going to say enter the number and it's going to replace this zero with what's in here. What's i? i is going to be equal to zero at first. So zero plus one is one. So it's going to say enter number one. When i increases to number one, it's going to say what's one plus one, two. Enter number two, blah, 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 blah. So inside here, we're just going to say num for like the number they're going to enter. Or we could even do this. We're going to say number i is equal to convert to a 32 console dot reline. So basically it's going to say, okay, remember the array starts at number zero. So it's going to say, okay, number was I zero. Okay. The first number is going to be set to whatever they enter. The second number is going to be set to whatever they enter and blah, 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 blah. And so we're going to store all those values in there. And you know what? We're not even going to add them right away. We're just going to comment this out with our block comment. And comment this out as well. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do another loop that loops uh, using the same thing, another identical loop. And notice that we can still use i because as soon as the scope is over, 
i no longer exists so we can still create a new variable called i so we're just going to print out what is in each and every variable so we're just going to send the number i and we'll f ignore the rest of the program so how many numbers would you like to enter we would like to enter four it says enter number one and i you know what sorry i just Colon and space there. Uh, enter the. I want to enter four. Okay, so enter number one, three. Enter number two, seven. Enter number three, eight. Enter number four, ten. And so three, seven, eight, ten. So if you wanted to, we could even do. Um, we could add them all together. We could say let's just make a temporary variable called total. Set it equal to zero. Oh, we already have a variable called total up there. Sorry about that. So then we'll just say total plus equals the number. And then we'll print out the total. And we want to enter four numbers. So, and the total is 18. So voila, there we go. So that is the wonderful world of arrays. So arrays allow you to store multiple uh, variables under one name, and it allows you to, yeah. But the, the grouping in one name is what makes arrays so powerful. So I thoroughly hope you, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment and subscribe, and bye.